The Pitt Rivers Museum in Oxford was founded in 1884 by Augustus Pitt Rivers, a British Army officer, ethnologist and archaeologist. The displays were installed by its first curator, Henry Balfour, and catalogued by the anthropologist Beatrice Blackwood. And today, this eccentric and quirky space is like a trip back in time. It's crammed with around 55,000 objects on display, ranging from prehistoric hand axes and a witch in a bottle to a mask with movable eyes and a leaf-shaped dagger. And behind the scenes, the museum looks after another 550,000 items, cataloguing, conserving and studying the many different historic items it houses. The Pitt Rivers has often been described as a museum of a museum. Feeling at once old and new, traditional and contemporary. The mix of styles is extremely popular, with visitor numbers climbing to over 500,000 in the last few years. A sensitive modernization program has included the installation of 170 meters of new displays. That's almost the length of two big bends. The addition of 1,500 new exhibits and the digitization of 10,000 photographs. They've even lit up the whole space with tons of energy efficient LEDs, transforming many of their displays. All of this shows that the Pitt Rivers is looking to the future. But to do so, it also needs to face up to its past. Like most 19th century European museums, the Pitt Rivers has its roots in colonialism. When it opened in 1884, the British Empire stretched from North America to New Zealand and included large parts of Africa and Asia. Other European countries, such as Belgium, France and the Netherlands had similar colonies. At the time, it was common for these colonial powers to send people across the world with the army to work, for study, or sometimes just for fun. As they travelled, some even chronicled their experiences with the emerging technology of film. Looking through the Pitt Rivers film archive today, you get a sense of what it was like for these European travellers encountering people and places they knew little or nothing about. They had suddenly discovered new and different landscapes and creatures, witnessed rituals and religious ceremonies, and been fascinated by the clothes of both rich and poor, as well as by the local craftsmanship they observed but you can also see the colonial mindset, where what they saw as foreign and exotic was to be captured, relocated and displayed for those back home in Europe. They didn't just take photos or film. Before long, items of historical interest were being sent to Europe from all over the world. Much of the Pitt Rivers collection was acquired during the heyday of the British Empire, and the museum often reflected these imperial values. When object labels were written, for example, they used what is now considered derogatory and shocking language. When challenged on this in the 1980s, the museum just painted the offending words out. But things are changing, and to make this change, the Pitt Rivers is inviting the world in. Now, other voices are pushing the museum to reassess its own history. Some of these are from places where objects in the collection originated. For example, a Maasai delegation from Kenya and Tanzania came to the Pitt Rivers in 2017. 
Working with the museum, they identified some objects that they considered to be problematic acquisitions. For example, a traditional bracelet, which was supposedly donated to the museum by a colonial administrator in 1904. According to the Maasai, this bracelet is a form of inheritance which cannot be sold or given, and which should be passed on from generation to generation. The Maasai people believe that bad fortune may have come upon the family from which it was taken. The Maasai Living Cultures Project is an ongoing discussion between the museum and the Maasai in how best to deal with these objects and the issues surrounding them. The Haida Nation have been involved in similar discussions. Representatives from Haida Gwaii, a group of islands between Canada and Alaska, have been in conversation with both the Pitt Rivers in Oxford and the British Museum in London to improve relationships between the Haida people and the museums holding their treasures. For over a century, Haida artifacts have formed an important part of the Pitt Rivers collection. This includes this Haida war helmet, with its carved and painted octopus, which the Haida believe was worn by prominent chiefs during battle or ceremonial war dances. And of course, there's the Haida totem pole, which has become a symbol of the museum. It's over 11 meters tall, the largest object in the collection, and shows seated figures and animals, such as a bear, a frog, and a raven. These totems serve many purposes, such as commemorating important events or telling the stories of the local people. All of these items still have huge cultural significance to the local people. Something Haida artists Jalen and Gwai Edenshaw felt immediately when they first visited the Pitt Rivers in 2009. You always feel two ways when you're in a museum like that because it's so awesome to be in the presence of all this old Haida things, but at the same time, you, you know, you feel a sadness because all those things were uh, removed from our village and, and by that removing has lost its purpose in our community. I didn't expect it actually, but when I walked into the room with the chief's headdresses, it was a very emotional experience and, I, and uh, it caught me off guard you know, those pieces felt like they were lost. The importance of these items isn't limited to the objects themselves. They tell us a huge amount about the cultures they come from. Take the Great Box, for example, part of the Pitt Rivers collection since 1874. We don't know exactly what it was used for, but we do know it is a masterpiece of Haida Nation craftsmanship. That's why Gwai and Jalen decided to create a replica. The brothers spent 28 days at the museum, studying the box and relearning the skills of their ancestors. Working 12 hour days, they eventually carved the replica and took the new box and new skills back home. This is just one example of the many projects to welcome more voices to the debate. The Pitt Rivers has run workshops, seminars, lectures and meetings to ensure this difficult history and the hurt it has caused is heard and understood. Of course, this doesn't right those wrongs, but by shining a light on its history, the Pitt Rivers is showing that the past belongs to everyone. <laughs>